Now, our next speaker, uh, he actually joined us in our first one of our first webinars almost two years ago uh, after the pandemic happened and we moved on to uh, going online. So he's back with us now. It's going to be awesome to see how far he's come and where he's at now and uh, what the future looks like. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Rocco Bova. Rocco, welcome to the program. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Christian. Nice to be back. And uh, also nice to, to see some new faces as well in this webinar. Uh, people I, I didn't know, like uh, Anastasia, for example. So more, for those who doesn't know me, my name is Rocco. I'm from Italy originally. I'm an hotelier for the past uh, 25 plus years and currently living in Mexico for the past five years. Uh, wonderful country, wonderful people, and, uh, and a country that has been open uh, all this while. Uh, Mexico has never closed its borders, and we've been witnessing actually uh, a, a, an enormous growth in terms of tourism. Mexico is now the country, most, the most visited country in the world. Uh, a, a, a trophy which was held by France uh, and the United States for you know very long time, and now actually I'm sitting right in the best uh, in the best place to be during a pandemic. So. For those who doesn't know Mexico, it's time to come and visit us. So today we want to discuss about recruiting and retaining. Uh, but I'd like to challenge the audience a little bit and also some of the speakers because we, 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 we I mean, I love the, what Mar Marcin is doing. And uh, Marcin, if you're looking for somebody there, I'd love to work with you. It, lo it looks like you're the best, the best employer in the world, you know, for what you offer to your staff. But at the same time, I would like to challenge a, a little bit of a, a, a common place. Why do we need to retain people for a long time? Why instead don't we make the most of their time as well as they make the most of their time with the, with the company that they work for? And it doesn't matter if it's three months, six months or, or 30 years. I'm not sure, and I, I've experienced this myself, uh, I'm not sure or I'm not totally sure that keeping the same people for a very long time makes a, a company actually a better company. What, what makes a great company, in my opinion, is uh, uh, treating their staff fairly, paying them fairly. Uh, I think it's something that, is, that uh, uh, both Anastasia and Marcin have, have mentioned. And, um, and most, of, most of all, actually providing a platform for them to grow, whether to grow within the company or outside of the company, provide them with the tools. You know, one of the one of the uh, phrase which which uh, which uh, goes around for, for many years. I think it was Richard Branson or something like that. Someone like him saying, you know, better to train your staff and see them leaving, or better don't train them to keep them in your company. You know, for me is is the first is obviously you know the best uh, the best of the option. You want to train your people so that they can go somewhere else. And if they go, well, so good for them. For me as a manager, what does it mean that I need to start all over again the process of uh, re uh, recruitment, uh, selection, uh, motivation, inspiration, and so on and so forth? But this is part of our job as well as a leader. We cannot just uh, hope that the, you know, our team will stay there forever because maybe we can only achieve so much with the very same. Anyway, moving on, uh, here is a, a, few, uh, a few slides that I'd like to share with the, with the audience. So currently we have, we, know we have some challenges in the recruitment. We know that the hospitality industry has suffered a massive loss uh, of people moving away from the industry or actually being, uh, uh, I don't want to use this word, but I'm going to use it being disposed of. Uh, sadly, yes, many, many companies that, you know, one day to the next, uh, they decided to lay off uh, millions of people uh, just because, you know, their, their hotel or the restaurants was closing down, you know, for temporarily or for good. And millions and millions of people lost their job one day to the next. So there is an overload of talent out there right now. So anyone uh, posting a job today, you know, in any hotel, in any restaurants will receive uh, hundreds, if not even thousands 
of CVs in just a matter of days, which makes obviously the job of the selection very complicated. Uh, there's a lot of confusion, you know, people don't know where to apply, so they apply everywhere. <laughs> so they send their CV to any Tom, Dick and Harry uh, around the world. You know, I, I receive in, in Mexico CVs from countries, you know, uh, that they know they won't be able to work anyway. So I, I, I kind of wonder why, uh, why do they apply? But they are so desperate, they're so confused, that they give it a try anyway. There is a distrust in our industry. Um, the, people, the people that they've lost their job, um, they now don't trust hospitality. They say, you know, what, what if I go back and then in three months I may lose my job again? And obviously the great resignation, you know, something that Marci was talking about. You know, people say, you know what, enough. You know, I'm going to change industry. I'm going to change job completely. Maybe I set up my own business and I'm done with it. But at the same time, I, I noticed a, a challenge that till now, I don't think it's been solved. Yes, there are a lot of applications out there. There is a lot of technology out there, but I don't think there is one specifically for the need of hospitality. I don't think that technology companies have invested to actually ask people from the industry and say, hey, why don't you come here? and tell me what exactly do you need in terms of technology to be able to filter the, the, the actual candidate that you're looking for. I don't think they have done that. And if somebody has some tips, please share it because I also would like to know. Uh, but I will be ready and happy to put together two or three people, two, two or three uh, hospitality experts that can help those technology companies uh, design an application that actually makes sense for the hospitality industry and people will not feel that they've been screened by a machine. All right, so opportunities. You know, for, for, for a long time, you know, uh, what's, you know, when I, when I, even including myself, when I went for interviews, you know, one of my question was, okay, what's in it for me? What, why should I join your, your company? What's, what, do I, what do I earn other than just a salary? And, uh, and I think that uh, companies very often, they're not ready for that. So they only tell you, okay, we are an international company. We give you great trading, uh, opportunities to grow. But really, you know, it's, 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 they have not updated. You know, they're not, they not up to today. Uh, with the knowledge of what an employee of today actually was. So they keep saying the same thing that they used to say 25 years ago when I was interviewing for jobs. That's not good enough. I think like Anastasia was saying, you know, we need to, we need to know exactly who, who we are and so that we can sell that opportunity to the, to the applicants and not just saying, well, you need a job, I need you, and okay, let's find a synergy there. But we need, to, we need to make people in love with the company so that they really get an inspiration about working there. We need to be able to attract great talents. And, and in order to attract the great talents, we also need to have the right tools and the right people that are able to scrutinize through the, CV, the hundreds of CVs and find the, that, that person. But at the same time, a lot of people a lot of people, they say, I oh, know the CV doesn't look nice. Trash it. Sometimes it's not, it's not um, and I'm going this, you know, shortly in the next few slides. Sometimes it's not the fault of the, of the applicants that sends a poor CV. It's just maybe because they don't know how to make one or they don't, they don't take time to make a great CV. But we, 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 we now actually never know who is the person behind that CV until we meet, we meet that person. Or we have the, the, the technology that screens candidates in a manner that the technology can tell us, hey, the CV is not that great, but the candidate, yes, he is. So I think we need to fine tune this, uh, this part. Companies, when they advertise uh, for jobs, uh, jobs advertisements often also very basic. 
you know, they don't give you a lot of information about the company. They don't give you, um, they don't give you benefits, for example. <laughs> you know, so sometimes they don't give you even salary scale. Um, and yes, I understand that this is, can be uh, putting off a candidate, but also we attract candidates that we don't want. You know? So what is the point to have a 10,000 CVs for one position instead of saying, okay, my, the salary offer is this, you know, the, uh, the benefit offer are that, you know, please send your CV at this email. If I know exactly what the salary range, salary range is or, or, or at least the minimum salary offered is, at least I know, okay, is this something that interests me or not? Do I want, really want to apply? I must say, I'm, uh, am I so desperate? Or really I want to join the company, no matter, how much money they're going to pay me because I want to join that project. I want to, this project is going to be amazing. So maybe, maybe it doesn't match my expectations, but I, I still want to join. But at least you will get some kind of filtering, you know, when you make it clear, your advertisement. We also need to talk, we, we also need to talk and, and, and uh, ensure that we are also have the best practice. You know, when, when we do an interview, um, I think that, you know, the interviews also gone very weird, you know, from uh, being overly technical to being kind of a uh, touch feel um, or storytelling. <laughs> so, and I witnessed this myself. So it's, yes, it is important that we, we, uh, we, we, we calibrate um, the best way possible, who is the person in front of the, of the interviewer. But at the same time, we need to also use best practices. And there are many best practices around the world. There are companies that are excellent at interviewing and screening candidates. And, uh, and I've seen this myself, obviously, in different companies. Some very, very small, other very, very big. Some company, for example, they put you at very senior level. They put you through an assessment center for two days. Uh, they pay you everything, but they want to make sure that they get the best general managers out there available. And yes, it's costly to, to, to have an assessment center uh, for, a, for a general manager and to get you know, two or three candidates through an assessment center may cost you, I don't know, maybe 30, 40, maybe $50,000. But that is an investment for, for the long term. How much money can that general manager make you uh, for, for the company if he or she is gonna be employed? And uh, finally, on this slide, I would like to focus on the real tangible benefit. You know, let's talk about the real benefit. Martin mentioned about money. Is it all in the money? I think that for the bigger part, it is. You know, at the end of the day, people need to make a, a decent living. They need to be able to pay the bills. They don't need to work two jobs to meet ends. You know, I, I know so many people, and that included myself in the early stage of my career, that I had to work more than my eight hours a day. I just couldn't make it. For example, London was, and I guess still is, a, a very expensive city. I couldn't make it with just working in one place, eight hours a day, I couldn't. So I had to work extra time over the weekend, you know, to go in another hotel and to do some conferences some banquets some weddings and earn some extra money so that I can have also some pocket money just to go out with my friends and so on and so forth. So we really need to make it tangible, the benefit that we provide to our, to our team members. Okay, in the next two slides, I'm gonna give you some tips for the job seekers, and I'm gonna give some tips also for recruiters. So for the job seekers, please, for God's sake, please stop saying I'm interested. You know, after, you know, several years of being on LinkedIn and people write, I'm interested on, on the job app, I mean, come on, guys. How can you keep writing this uh, instead of thinking that, wait a minute, let me connect with the, with the person who's posting the job. Let me write something on the invitation, not just invite and that's it. Let me just write an invitation. Why am I, uh, why I want to connect with you? Make it, make it uh, meaningful, this connection, and see what can I get out of this connection. But if you just, you know, just say I'm interested, you'll never ever get a job. Unless the person who recruits is desperate and you don't want to work for a desperate company anyway. 
So be in the top 1% of candidates or at least the top 10% of candidates because if you do like everybody else, you will never be noticed, okay? Invest the time in your brand, your personal branding is as important as your work and, and your references. If you don't walk the talk, if you just uh, send a CV that say, oh, I work this and I have done that, and, but nobody really knows you, you know, that your chances will be slimmer. Again, try to be in that 1% or at least in that 10% of employees. Perfect your curriculum, you know, work, tirelessly to make your curriculum nearly perfect, if not perfect. No mistakes, no grammar errors, a great picture of yourself. Don't do selfies. You know, make a CV stand out from the crowd. If you make your, your CV look like uh, trash, they will, they will be trash, literally. So invest time. And if you have to pay a company to make your CV and spend $100, do it. Is this probably will be the best hundred dollars spent in your life. Prepare, prepare and prepare. You know, go to an interview with preparation. You know, knows the company, know about the interviewer, the person who's interviewed. You know, you can check now very easily. You Google or you go on LinkedIn, you can find a professional and you know already who you're talking to. Never say never, meaning, a lot of people say, no, I don't want to work here. It's too cold because it's in Iceland. No, I don't want to work there because, you know, the culture there is not really my stuff. No, I don't want to work here because the company is not really what I want. No, I don't want to do that. And cruise lines, you know, they don't treat you well. You work too hard. And airlines, you know, I feel fear of altitude, whatever. Don't close any door. When you need a job, you need a job. So keep all doors possible open until you find the one that you really want. And I know quite a few people, including some friends, that say, oh, this one, I'm not, so, I'm not so sure. Well, if you're not so sure, you know, you may be out of work for a long time. So trust me, you don't want to keep any door closed. One guy, you know, in a, in a, in a address to some student at Stanford University, said, keep looking, don't settle. His name was Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is, was uh, the founder of uh, Apple and what is today one of the most uh, successful company in the world. Uh, I'm not an Apple fan as a matter of the device, but I'm, I, I'm an Apple fan as a company and, and how it was born, you know, and their values and the visionary behind it, you know, that was Steve Jobs. Keep looking, don't settle. If you think that you have sent 200 applications and you got zero answers, keep looking, don't settle. If you sent 500, keep looking, don't settle. If you find 1,000, keep looking, don't settle until you find that one that is going to open the door for you. Ghosting. <laughs> so a lot of people is crying online and say, oh, nobody's answering me. You know, I've sent so many applications and nobody's answering if one, for one second, you put yourself in the shoes of recruiters, and this I talked to Anastasia most probably, maybe, I don't know, I'm not so sure about tech companies, but in the hospitality industry, millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people are looking for jobs, and, and the recruiter re receives thousands of CVs for one position in some cases. So if you, get, if you not, don't get an answer, I mean, stop crying. Stop worrying about getting an answer. If you, don't, if you don't get an answer, that means you're not being selected for the job. End of story, move on. Keep looking, don't settle. Instead of thinking, why they don't answer me? You know, this is a bad company, bad people. It's not true. They just don't have enough time to do what they're supposed to do and what they do best. Because the company, I, you know, I also have been applying in the past. They used to answer me. If they don't answer me now, that's okay. That means that I'm not the selected candidate and I move on to, on to something else instead of keep worrying about why they don't answer, why they're not so professional, why they talk so much about being people oriented and they don't really do, they don't mean it. Well, they don't have time. Imagine receiving for, you know, to, um, to do a mass recruitment and receiving 10,000 CVs maybe at some point. When I was in India, for, you know, I'm talking about India 15 years ago, I, we used to do open days with 5,000 people in a day. 
Oh, how can I get through everybody? It's impossible. So keep looking, don't settle. And last but not least, ask at least five relevant questions. When you close your interview and the interviewer is all gonna ask you, do you have any question? Most of the people tells me, even when I, when I interview some candidate, tells me, no, I have no question. Okay, that already tells me that the person is not curious. Curiosity means that you want to learn, means that you want to know more. So be ready with at least the five questions, okay? I hope that these tips, they're gonna help job seekers to find what they want. I'm gonna give you some tips now for the employers because we, when we look for people, also need to be ready to get the best out of our employment campaign. So be very specific and clear when re recruiting. There's no point to say on an ad and say, we're looking for you. You what? <laughs> You know, what positions, you know, for example, just a few days ago, there was a, a, somebody on, on, on LinkedIn, they were looking for a CEO with experience, an experienced CEO retired so that he can continue to work uh, sharing their experience with this company. So there was no mention about the company, there was no mention about the industry. If you don't make it specific, you may get a CEO from, I don't know, the space agency and what do I need a space agency CEO for? You know, he was not going to give me any connection or any, any relevant information about the industry that I really need the CEO for. List of salaries and benefits. I am I'm a believer that salaries and benefits need to be listed. So at least people, they understand. Unless it's a, it's a brand new market. In a brand new market and a brand new destination, you may not need to do because obviously there's no benchmark. But if you have benchmark, you know, if you are in a place like New York, Dubai, London, you know, Beijing, Shanghai, I don't know, Singapore, Hong Kong, you don't have your benchmark. So you know how much your competition is paying the best restaurant manager or best waiter or best housekeeper. So don't be afraid to mention how much you pay because that can be a selection process already for you. Use technology to your advantage. If there is one, if there is one, this was gonna help you to pre-select already your candidate. And to the sake of Anastasia again, use headhunters because a lot of HR departments, they don't have the know-how or they don't have as much know-how, let's say, as a headhunter. Headhunters specific in the industry, they have already have 10,000 or 20,000 candidates in their portfolio. They already have them by department, by seniority, by experience, by language spoken. In a click of a finger, they will find you already 10 people. They will interview them with a short list of two or three. They present them to you. Within a week, you already have two or three candidates that you can interview instead of you waiting and waiting for two or three weeks until you get what you want. A headhunter can give you this within days, most probably. Don't stick to only traditional medias, okay? We need to get away from traditional media. You know, now beside LinkedIn, there is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and God knows how many other social media platforms where you can post a job and you can get the candidate that you want. Because candidate today, they, they stay, they go everywhere. Employer branding. So not is only about brand me, it's also about brand employer. So who is the company behind? Why should you join me? What do I do for you? How do I make you feel when you join us as a company? So these are the, the, the little things that so many companies still don't do, okay? We need to have a brand. We need to sell the company to the other person, to the applicant and say, come here because here we have the best T-shirt, for example, the best uniforms, the best meals in the staff canteen. We have the best tools for you to do your job, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, or not really so finally, but we are looking for Generation Z or younger generation. So we need to be a bit more creative in looking for people. You know, we cannot, again, we cannot use traditional methods to find new employees. If you want to find, if you want to be extraordinary, um, yes, you need to be different from, from the rest. You need to be on that 10% minimum or possibly in that 1%.
What are you waiting for? Do it now. <laughs> well, that's all for me. Thank you so much. All right, Rocco, that was awesome. I love the the last slide there. What are you waiting for? Do it, do it now. <laughs> That's my best Arnold. I'm sorry, I should have gone into uh, voice acting.